Hello, my people. It's your Negro with Aptitude and host of the Blackboard, Mickey Lee. I hope your week is going well so far, and welcome to another episode of Waste Not Wednesdays. This series focuses on practical steps you can take to prepare your mind, body, and soul for the sweeping changes currently occurring in the United States and around the world as food shortages intensify and public services are either dismantled or um, come to a complete stop people will find themselves in greater and greater need of solving their own problems so this week I thought I would focus on something I keep seeing trending mostly among uh, white YouTubers and in the prepping community. It's something called a mutual aid society. Mutual aid societies are not new. In fact, they've been around for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years and in a formalized institution, they've actually been around thousands of years and you could pretty much say ever since the beginning of mankind. Unlike a charity, a mutual aid society is just what it says people involved in that group offer mutual aid to each other so everyone is bringing something to the group and everyone will take something away from the group mutual aid societies can be ethnically based nationally based business based professionally based neighborhood based there are all kinds of mutual aid societies and some of them have been called benevolent societies in the United States, there is a great history of benevolent or mutual aid societies that helped free blacks uh, to, to um, settle in their towns and cities as they arrived either from the southern states as a result of escaping slavery or before slavery was instituted. I know you can't believe it, but there was a time where there were free blacks in the United States before slavery itself was instituted. And these societies helped various Africans to settle in their uh, new locales. These societies are going to be uh, extremely important in the coming months and years. As I mentioned, we can expect intensified food shortages to the point of famine. Uh, most of this is man-made and on purpose. I have been providing you with some links in the description box that I hope you will start to watch these particular YouTubers and do some research. Um, I also hope that you'll start to grow food and uh, on your own and learn um, small an animal husbandry as well as start uh, stockpiling uh, canned goods, rice, beans, and staples right now while you can. But these mutual aid societies, also known as benevolent aid societies, uh, are always useful in a time of crises and they're going to be specifically useful now. Uh, and especially in the African-American um, community because so many of our households are uh, single parent households and primarily woman led households. I'm not going to uh, delve much into why that is. I think we all know why that is, but just suffice it to say that whereas other ethnic groups and other women will have a large amount of support to draw from, we will largely have each other. So I wanted to make sure to start putting this type of um, resource in your mind. As I mentioned, free, I'm sorry, uh, mutual aid societies and benevolent societies have been around for pretty much as long as there have been humans. Uh, in the black or ADOS community, there have been many benevolent uh, societies as well. One of the best known was the Free African Society established in the late 1700s uh, by Richard Allen and Absalom Jones uh, in order to help free blacks who had escaped from slavery to resettle themselves in Philadelphia. 
Uh, this also, you know, they also helped blacks who had never been enslaved uh, to be in, in, in to help in Philadelphia. Uh, they, you know, provided food, clothing, housing. Um, both uh, Mr. Jones and Mr. Allen were religious people, I believe, of the Episcopalian uh, denomination. And so they fostered a religious, uh, ethnic, racial uh, unity as well. So we do have a history of uh, benevolent societies and free I'm sorry, benevolent societies and mutual aid societies. And even today in various parts of black communities, there will be uh, organizations such as the UNIA, uh, United Negro uh, Improvement Association, I believe is what it, it stands for, uh, who organize uh, mutual aid societies. Now that we know what uh, mutual aid societies and benevolent societies or benevolent associations are for, it's important for us now to start to draw on their histories and to start to draw on many of the tactical and practical uh, approaches they use to make these um, societies flourish because as I said a moment ago we are going to need to collectively come together for food shelter safety both for ourselves and for our animals now animals um, by animals I do mean pets initially or or first uh, primarily but I also mean uh, joining together to to do small animal husbandry, such as learning how to take care of chickens or ducks or or um, um, rabbits or other you know small uh, animals that can be used for protein uh, resources. We also will need uh, to defend our situation because uh, as we can see regardless of what side you stand on with the protests and um, the various activities out there, there are clearly some people out there who are bent on uh, destruction. They are not out there marching because they want society to change in a peaceful and positive way. They're out there because they are anarchists. And I'll get to um, the the connection between many uh, mutual aid societies from the larger um, group it, within the United States and their connection to anarchist teachings. Um, but we do have a, a history of it and we now need to come together in order to, and, and when I say come together, I mean with like-minded individuals. Some of these individuals may be in your own household. Other individuals may be friends of yours. Others may be people that you, you know, currently work with or go to church with, or maybe you meet at the gym together, or they may be people that you find online. We'll examine in just a moment some ways of how to uh, find these people. But my suggestion as far as uh, tips is that you uh, work to find out if there are mutual aid or benevolent societies already existing in your area. And if so, check them out to see if that's a group of people that you think you can work with. If not, start canvassing the people within your household, then your family, um, than other people close to you to see who you can actually work with to start storing food and water, to start securing locations, to start growing food in each other's backyards or buying together a plot of land that you start to work and secure, uh, to start securing um, uh, small animals and seeds for you to begin um, these activities with. As I mentioned, there are lots of benevolent aid uh, societies or mutual aid societies, benevolent associations, that's another name for them. The way to find them these days would be, no surprise here, Facebook. 
you can enter um, mutual aid societies in the search results and lots of different types of organizations will come up. You also can look on Instagram and Twitter. In the wake of the pandemic, uh, along with other uh, natural disasters that have been occurring, there have been lots of associations and um, groups that have sprung up. Some of them are neighborhood specific. So you may try looking in your own neighborhood first or doing a search for your own neighborhood first. Another resource would be the app called Next Door. Um, now, I said that I wanted to make sure you understood the connection between mutual aid societies in the larger or what we also call dominant society. Many, the, the term mutual aid society was coined by an anarchist, uh, can't exactly remember his name at this particular moment, but his point was to show the difference between mutual aid societies and Darwinism. Darwinism, which is based on what he called, Darwin himself called the survival of the fittest, and so it's based on competition, whereas this other individual noted that all throughout nature, the groups that survived the longest and the best were those who worked in cooperation with one another for mutual survival and mutual um, benefit. Uh, however, that individual also is a self-proclaimed anarchist. Those values of the anarchist are largely at odds with the value of African Americans or ADOS or if, if FBA, if you prefer. Though many of us are falling away from the following of Jesus Christ, and there are many reasons for this, all of which I understand because I at one time too had lost my faith, the fact of the matter is we generally are not a destructive people and we generally are a people who um, thrive best in situations where everyone is uh, getting a win, where it's a win-win situation. So as you go out looking for uh, mutual aid societies or ben benevolent associations to join, if you are joining those groups that are based in the larger society or as we may call the dominant society, just be prepared that some of their values may be very, very different and you need to weigh this very carefully uh, because even though it may not appear like it, the fact of the matter is this world and its entire creation comes from the mind of God the Father and is implemented through his son, Jesus Christ. So we need to be very careful that what we do in this life will be found approved by him. So when we stand before him, he will allow us to enter his kingdom, which is also called heaven. By default, if you are not approved by him, you will enter the other kingdom, which is known as hell. So when you check out these societies, make sure that you understand how they're operating and what their general principles or values are. Generally, those people from the larger society tend to be um, anti-religious. They also tend to have a fatalist point of view and they are dependent fully on themselves. Whereas black people, African-Americans, ADOS, the term I prefer, or FBA, we generally are people who have been set aside unto the Lord. We generally follow him through our faith in Jesus Christ. We generally understand that though we are to be active in a circumstance. Ultimately, we are dependent on the Lord. So make sure when you join whatever society it is or even working with people from your own family that you are clear within yourself that your values will stay in a way that finds you approved before the Lord. So in short, Pray to the Lord and keep your powder 
dry, as the old saying goes. So that basically means take action and do that today. Uh, for some really strong suggestions about what you should be doing, watch the rest of the Waste Not Wednesday video series. Begin now to store at least six months worth of food, water, medical supplies. Uh, in terms of food, I would concentrate on canned goods uh, while you also start to um, grow uh, food as well. And medical supplies, anything you currently need now, try to double up, get as much of it as you can. Uh, because even uh, because so much of our pharmaceuticals have come from China, there's beginning to be a shortage on basic medicines that Americans use. So you really, if you're on diabetes medication, for example, or heart medication or some of these other um, uh, well-known types of illnesses or common illnesses, you need to take steps now to try to get off that medication or at least get uh, extra supplies of it. Remember your pets. You know, a, a lot of people, uh, you know, think that abandoning a pet in a time of crisis is a reasonable thing. It isn't. Uh, pets are thinking, feeling, sentient uh, um, individuals, and though they do not have souls, you are responsible for that pet and you will answer for how you treated that animal in this life. This is the facts and that is in the Bible. Uh, so make a point of preparing for your pets now. Go and get extra canned uh, food. Go and get extra dry kibble if that's what your, your animal is on. But make sure you have plans to care for your animal. Make sure you have cash available. Uh, you know, at least a couple of thousand dollars, I can tell you the banks will close and we'll have a situation like Spain or Greece or Italy where those people could not get at their money. So make sure that's not you. Have a meeting place designated for family. This may be easier said than done, but try to work with your family members if possible or other trusted uh, you know, people, friends and neighbors to have a designated place where everybody will go in the case of a major uh, catastrophe or um, other situation. Be sure to read God's word. Uh, if you haven't been reading your Bible, make a point of doing that every day. Set a time every day and meet that time. Meet God at that time. Read his word, repent daily, ask for Jesus Christ to save you, ask the Lord to seal you to him so that you cannot go back. Um, and ask the Lord to build your trust in him. It's, it's an unnatural state for us to, to be trusting in the Lord. So we do need his help in order to do that. And what is going on now is that he is revealing to mankind uh, a bit of that other world and and also revealing to mankind that we cannot solve our own problems on our own and going our own way only leads to disaster. So I hope that this information is um, useful to you. Please be sure to let me know in the comment section. I always like to hear from you and I'd like to hear what other topics or individuals you think I should reach out to for uh, Waste Not Wednesdays. All right, we'll see you next week. Thanks again for joining me on this episode of The Blackboard. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Also, take a moment and check out the information located in the description box. There are lots of links and information about other people that I watch who do excellent content to help empower you and educate you so that you wind up on the right side of eternity. We'll see you next time.